What's up, Bachelor Nation? It's your host, Hannah, of Will You Accept This Rosé? And as you all know, we have reached the final week of Bachelor, the end of the Bachelor, Peter's season. It's over. So I'm sure we all know what happened, but we're still here to recap because that's just what we do. It was a, a double header Monday, Tuesday, and we are going to try and just whip through this as fast as we can because we all know it was four hours of our life that we will probably never get back. So I'm not going to force it any longer. All right. So as we know, everyone's down in Down Under in Australia, and they are basically at the stage where they are going to meet Peter's parents. So, oh, and Barb. Barb has a lot of airtime this episode, so we'll try and get through all the, the Barbisms because she was just a hot mess and we loved it. But so Barb, first thing, gets to meet Hannah Ann, who she described, quote unquote, as an angel on earth. So that was interesting. But long story short, they really hit it off. They thought Hannah Ann was incredible, like the best girl that Peter could have ever ended up with, which I thought was a little bit of laying it on because... Uh, they literally talked to her for an hour. So that was a lot, but they really took to her. They thought she'd be a great wife to Peter, so loved her. Really not a whole lot else to say about that. It was kind of, they loved her to a creepy degree, and we all saw that. But then it came to um, Madison coming in and meeting them, and obviously we knew that they were kind of like in a rough place with the whole Madison being a virgin thing and her just kind of like having all these doubts at the very end, which I thought was like, okay, pretty convenient of her to withhold the fact that she thinks her and Peter are so different up until the very end. But ah, that's what she did. Guess we got to respect that. But might have took her a while to come to that conclusion. We'll give her a break. But right before she meets Peter's parents, she kind of sits outside and talks to Peter, which we will later find that Barb said was for three hours, <laughs> kept his family waiting for a very long time. Cannot confirm or deny that fact, but that's a pretty long time. So her and Peter kind of hash things out. As all these conversations go, they don't really reach much of a conclusion of like where things are going to go, but she seems to be Worried, still very apprehensive that they're different people and doesn't know if things are going to work out, but she's going to keep keep going, give it a shot. So meets the family and right out of the gate, like his parents are just getting bad vibes. Like they just don't think that she's really someone worth respecting or that is going to work out well with Peter. And his mom makes this very apparent with after the fact when they all met, like they all kind of were a little bit abrasive towards Madison in their conversations. They didn't really seem very warm to her. And she kind of tried to sit, say her piece, but I mean, didn't really sink in because Barb starts freaking bawling to Peter after saying that Hannah, like God came to her and told her that Hannah Ann <laughs> was the woman that he was going to marry. And that Madison was just not going to work. And she was making her case with lots of tears and basically putting Peter in a really tough spot. Like clearly, I think we can all see that Madison was his front runner, but his parents, like they just kind of threw a knife in his happy ever after. And his mom is just very, I don't know. She just doesn't, she's not here for Madison. She's here for Hannah Ann. And she made that very clear. So we get to see Peter go on another date with both Hannah Ann and Madison. Long story short, we all saw Madison kind of, finally end things between them. She just doesn't think it's going to work. She claims that if love is real, then she believes that she, because she loves Peter, she's doing the right thing by letting him be with someone who like he sh deserves to be with, which apparently is Hannah Ann. So she leaves. Peter is clearly very upset about this fact. He's having a real hard time with it. <laughs> Their conversation when she was dumping him was probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen with all the flies attacking them at the same time. I was like, ah, oh. Those Bachelor producers, they did it again. So then he goes on a pretty ho-hum, lukewarm date with Hannah Ann, clearly holding back his feelings for Madison, is not telling her that Madison has removed herself. And 
is just kind of like giving her half of himself at this point, and she kind of sees that, and she knows that, gets a little emotional, feels like he's not all in it, which she's right, he's not. So we basically finish off Monday's episode with that, his last conversation with Hannah Ann, which he seems a little bit not all the way there. And then we move on to Tuesday night, where I thought they jumped right into this proposal moment at like rapid speed. So that's where I knew things were, things were a little fishy. So he basically is like already in his like proposal tuxedo and he's FaceTiming Hannah Ann's dad and is like, yo, like, is it cool if I asked your daughter to marry me? And it was like a really quick snap type thing where like his dad was like, yeah, like we just want her to be happy kind of, but which is weird for how much of a hard ass he was when they first met, but whatever. Might have cut out some of that conversation. You know how editing works. But anyway, he is then finally informed when he's like in position to propose to Hannah Ann that she may not show up. Chris Harrison says he just found out this big news, which is basically what they've been teasing all season, which was the fact that Hannah Ann may not show up. So Peter has a meltdown, says he's going to pass out, has to lay down. The Bachelor producers are like dabbing his forehead like he has coronavirus or something. And he, he then, I mean, all his tears are washed away when he finds out that Hannah Ann's on her way. And so I think at this point, Peter felt like he was backed into a corner to a T. Had no other choice but to propose to Hannah Ann whether he felt like that was the decision he wanted to make or not. So we then get the final proposal and he informs Hannah Ann that Madison is gone. And then they just jump into this really uncomfortable, like forced proposal where it seems like he's just like, this is, she's the only one I have left. So might as well propose to her, which is just like, we'll get into that. But that was probably a really, really terrible mistake. So they, they get engaged, la di da. They're jumping around, they're laughing, they're having their champagne, and it looks like they're in one of those commercials where they seem like they're having a great time, but they're telling you that the symptoms could be like diarrhea, headache, death, like all that kind of thing. Like that's just kind of what it screamed to me. It just all seemed fake, very staged. And then we finally get to the point where Peter gets to tell Barb and his parents and or his dad and his brother that he picked Hannah Ann, their choice, which In that moment, I just think he was trying to please everyone but himself. He just picked the girl that everyone wanted him to pick, especially Barb. Good good God, she's an angel on earth to her. So they, he gets to tell them, and of course, Barb just loses her shit. She's in tears. She's so happy. And then they decide to FaceTime Hannah Ann, and she's just like, my daughter, oh my God, my daughter. Which if I was Anna Ann, like if a mother took to me that fast, I'd be flattered, but also a little bit like creeped out. (laughs) Like, why does she like me this much and is already calling me her daughter? I feel like in more normal situations, you kind of have to work for that kind of praise pretty hard. I think we've all been there where it's like impressing the mom is if your significant other is a mama's boy like Peter is, that's pretty hard to do. But Hannah Ann had no trouble. So, yes, we end on everything's happy for about 10 minutes, and then Peter gets to the dumping, which we all saw coming. So him and Hannah Ann meet up, and basically there's been arguments that they think that this was absolutely staged. Hannah Ann already knew that he was going to dump her because, I mean, obviously everything she had to say was very, like, rehearsed in a way. Like, she knew how to stand up for herself, which in this moment – I've not been the biggest Hannah Ann fan, but like, I think that the way she stood up for herself was warranted and she did a good job of basically calling Peter out on all his bullshit that we would all like to do ourselves. So basically the dumping's pretty quick. Hannah Ann tosses the ring back at him, which I thought was pretty epic. He's trying to console her as she's getting into the car and she's like, get out of my facing him, which is like, Awesome. Like, good. I hate when they walk to the car holding their hands, hugging them after they just got dumped. Like, in what world would you ever want to hold hands with the man that just broke off your engagement and basically, like, ripped your heart out? Like, I wouldn't want to go anywhere near them. I'd probably run into that car, not even looking back. So, good for her. 
they get a chance to meet back up on the live show with Chris Harrison, and she basically <laughs> rips him a new one. Barb, by the way, this was some excellent producing right here. They, during the whole show, most of the show anyway, they had a little corner square where we could see people's reactions in the audience. And as things were going on on screen, we would see how mostly Barb would just react to these things. And the best part of the whole breakup was the fact that as Peter was getting chewed out by Hannah Ann, his mother was in the audience cheering as Hannah Ann dumped him based dumped him back basically and that was just very bizarre everyone on twitter was thought that moment was just insane so anyway hannah ann as we all saw definitely got to say her piece she had probably had that in her head for a long time of everything she was going to say to peter and she basically just told him that everything we already knew that he should have told her in the days leading up how he was feeling and just should not have gone through with the proposal because she laid it out pretty straight that he robbed her of a moment she's kind of been dreaming of for in her entire life, which I think is totally fair. I mean, all us girls that have been thinking about that moment, it's a big deal. And he took that from her, which is really crappy. So, and, and she even brought up Hannah Brown, brought up Madison saying like out of all these women, she thinks she was kind of like at the bottom <laughs> and he still proposed to her just so he could like have someone at the end of this, which I think is really cruel. And I, I agreed with everything she said. Everyone is really team Hannah Ann after this whole situation for how she carried herself. So good on her. But of course, things are not over. Chris Harrison, the devil works hard, but Chris Harrison works harder. He goes, finds Madison, basically is like, you probably still have feelings for Peter, right? You want to go meet back up with them? You want to keep this thing going? And she's like, yeah, I'd love to. Even though I am wholeheartedly convinced that this girl does not give a shit about Peter. Like, she clearly is like, doesn't think they're going to work. But of course, it's The Bachelor, so they got to keep dragging this out. There's got to be some kind of an ending. So him and Madison... They get a chance to meet up, and I just feel like nothing got accomplished when they had a, another conversation post his breaking off an, an engagement with Hannah Ann. I just felt like they still didn't reach any sort of answer to their relationship or where they're going to go from here type situation, not even throwing out that they're dating now or anything really like that. So then we find ourselves in the final studio moment where Barb and Madison go face to face. And basically, Barb was like, she basically put her on blast. She's like, she made us wait for three hours before meeting us. Like, we saw how she was treating Peter, and it didn't seem like her feelings were in it the entire time. And then, like, she's just kind of not a great match for Peter as far as their lifestyle choices. And they just were, like, really, really stern in their beliefs that they were not going to work. To a point where it was like, come on, mom, like you got to let your son make his own mistakes, which is basically what everyone was thinking and saying. But Barb did not let off the brakes. So she was, I don't know, she was just letting her have it, letting Madison have it and just thinks that Peter should not be with Madison. And she used the famous quote that his failures will be his successes, which was interesting interesting way to put it and of course Peter and Madison are trying to stand up for themselves and Peter's saying like this is my choice you guys aren't even giving our relationship a chance but like to be fair no one even none of us know what they are like they don't even know what they are and to me things seemed a little fishy as they were sitting on the couch together and were literally like felt like they were miles apart. I feel like couples that are genuinely interested in each other and even if the mom doesn't approve, like they're still going to show their love outwardly and they didn't even, no cuddles, no hand-holding, no like coddling in hard times. I just felt like it was a very weird dynamic. And Madison, she tried to stand up for herself with Peter's mom. Like that's a really tough position. I thought she carried herself well, but I'm not going to lie. Like I just think Madison... I don't understand why she's still trying to make this work after all that she's kind of pushed back on. She's still in there, like, trying to be with Peter. They both claim that they love each other, but I'm like, okay. Like, still doesn't mean that you're going to work out, and I think everyone knows that, including Barb. She just took it a little too far, and it was uncomfortable for everyone that watched it, but it made for some amazing TV. 
But that's, I mean, as we all know, that's how they left things. They left things kind of in, on an ambiguous note. They didn't really claim that they were dating. They didn't say that they could see themselves getting married. I just feel like they're in for a lot of very awkward family gatherings. Easter's just around the corner, and I think all of us would love a camera in that family gathering to see how that plays out. So that's where we left things. That is the end of Peter the Pilot season, and now we know that Claire, who is from Juan Pablo's season, which feels like a decade ago, will be the new Bachelorette. So it could be interesting. Some people are a fan. I can't say I'm a big fan, but we'll we'll give her a chance. We'll give her a chance. But because it's the finale, we wanted to end with something special, <laughs> which is Twitter. Twitter is a very special place on Bachelor Nights. So we're going to go ahead and recap some of my favorite tweets and everyone in my office's favorite tweets. So our producer, Josh, is going to show you guys some of these. And so we'll start with the first one. <laughs> which is basically your classic cliche that we've seen in many rom-coms, including Cinderella's story, where the parent basically is saying that they're trying to argue with their child and say, you're giving up your dream. <laughs> and Peter, of course, is saying, no, mom, I'm giving up your dream, which apparently was the angel on earth, Hannah Ann. And I think that basically summed up the entire finale in one tweet and I just thought the photoshopping was tremendous <laughs> on this photo. So on to tweet number two. That one was a solid number one. Number two kind of goes a little bit hand in hand, pun intended, with our coronavirus epidemic that we're dealing with in the world. It's impossible for you not to know about coronavirus at this point and how important it is for you to wash your hands during this time. So in case you're not really sure, you need a technique, you need to sing a little song, We this person decided to do a little Barb remix and put in the words that Barb had said to Peter about Hannah Ann. <laughs> And I just think it's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. And I'm probably going to use this technique. So it says, bud, Hannah Ann loves you with all of her heart. Do not let her go. Don't let her go. <laughs> bring her home. Bring her home to us. So I think if you say that maybe once or twice as you're washing your hands, you're going you're gonna to get the job done. All right. On to tweet number three. So I'm sure... If many of you are Bachelor fans, I'm sure that you've been watching Love is Blind. It's a new Netflix series where couples that have never seen each other have to meet, interact, fall in love before they ever get to lay eyes on one another. And then they get to basically go live life and see if the decision they made that love is truly blind. So kind of works out for them. So we know how that all goes. And it's if, you, if you've been in the Twitter sphere, you know that people have really been putting this chick on blast that was on Love is Blind. She was basically an older woman dating a younger man, and she was just quite the character. <laughs> this younger man was so into her and so in love with her, but like all girls, we just don't see how the nice guy is going to work for us. And she kept saying that like him being so emotionally available and secure was a red flag which is just the most contradictory joke that everyone could not get over. So these two have a lot in common. So this tweet is saying what two months of reality TV and zero skills and decision-making looks like. So both of these people went through some pretty tumultuous relationships and clearly went for all the wrong people and did things for all the wrong reasons. So they have a lot in common. If you watch Love and Love is blind. This tweet really hit home. So on to number four, which is actually someone who did some deep investigative work on Instagram, which bless your heart. We all, we all need this content. So we appreciate your hard work. Someone went on to Kelly's Instagram, which we all know Kelly was a contestant and by far my favorite contestant. I thought she was awesome, but she was way too normal for Peter. He couldn't deal with her emotional secureness and basically being awesome. So Barb strikes again. She commented on Kelly's photo, basically saying that she's the most beautiful, elegant, classy, intelligent, stylish girl in the world <laughs> and decides to throw another dagger into Peter saying that Kelly was her favorite the whole time. <laughs> 
So I just think it's incredible that this woman is still going on about how she hates Madison on multiple different platforms <laughs> in sneaky little ways. We love it. We love you, Barb. You're the best distraction from coronavirus we never knew we needed. All right. On to our next one, which really hit home for me because I hated Victoria F. I did not hold back my feelings for her. So obviously we could all see that Victoria was very, very toxic. But after the finale this week, we kind of were introduced to a new toxic being in Peter's life who probably poisoned him from the very beginning, which is why he's so easily manipulated by crying women. So we all know this is just a fabulous meme of changing, thinking one thing and changing your mind. So honestly, the fact that we thought Victoria F might be the most toxic character on this season, we were wrong because in came Barb. So this one was great. All right, on to the next, another coronavirus and love is blind themed tweet. 2020 has just been such a dumpster fire and obviously things are just escalating even further with this coronavirus epidemic. I don't have to tell you that. Everyone knows that. So, I mean, honestly, it's a really valid question. Who is the biggest villain of 2020? Was it Barb? Was it Jessica from Love is Blind? Or is it coronavirus? We don't know. I don't know. But I think they're all, all very good contenders for the worst thing happening in 2020. All right. On to the next. Oh, just kidding. That's my last one, guys. Sorry. We're done. We're done with the tweets. So, it's been great. It's been awesome getting to recap this season. You won't see the last of me. I will definitely, as much as I don't really like Claire, I'm absolutely going to watch because that's just who I am as a person. And of course, I will be recapping for you guys. So it's been an awesome season. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube. Go follow us on Twitter because obviously I retweeted all these and I'm just going to keep retweeting stuff. So it's OCN underscore Rosé Reviews, but stay tuned. We'll see you guys next season. Thank you.